Hi, this is an introduction to the Web Form module for Drupal 8. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the Web Form module for Drupal 8. The best place to get started is to ask the question, what is the Web Form module? Web Form module is an open source form builder and submission manager. Another way to describe it is I want to walk you through the use case. The use case is you build a form that collects data also known as submissions, and you collect that data and people fill out the form, and then you either download and or download the data after it's been collected into a spreadsheet, or you distribute it maybe by just sending an email or posting it to a remote server. Now I want to demo the module because I'm going to give you a better introduction to it. So this is a clean install of the module for Drupal 8. Um, it ships with dismissible messages. This message is telling you that you've updated to the latest release. This learn more links to release notes, which also include videos to walk you through new features to the web form module. I'm going to close that one. This is linking to the video you're watching right now. And this is inline videos to help you as you navigate through the module. So this video starts to explain how to manage your forms, templates, and examples. And as you navigate through, there'll be more videos that you can learn from. And these are also available on Drupal.org. Now for this demo, I'd like to just show you the simple contact form. Everyone's familiar with this con type of contact form. It's four elements. In this example I'd like to show you is I want to add a company field, and that gives you a good starting point to show you how you manage elements. I'm going to click Add Element. I'm going to do a filter because it's just nice to show you that feature. And go over to the text field. I'm going to add text field. I'm going to call it Company. I'm going to start scrolling through, and I'm going to open up. The Very important to emphasize right now, I raised my voice, it's really important. The module ships with reasonable defaults. You don't have to change anything. I've just entered the title. That's all you need. You can just click save and move on. But I want to walk you through all the features that are available. And every possible feature is available to you. You can change the title display, the description display, field prefixes. Now we're on a text field, so you can control the size, max length, even min length is supported. You can set up placeholders. You can turn off auto completion on the text field. You can set up input mass, and then you get into CSS and styles that you can inject into the wrapper around the element, which includes the label and description, or you can inject them into the element specifically. This means you can change the color, the size of the element, you can set up validation rules, custom messages, you can set up patterns, there's even word count and letter count support, very useful for text areas, and there is conditional logic support. You have control over how this element will be displayed when it's inserted into an email, and it, Right now, you're just showing the value, which is fine. And you do get access controls for all your elements, so you can control who can see what element, where, and when. I'm not going to go too further, much further into that. And then you get some administrative settings where you can set up an admin title for an element. If you have very long titles, it's very worth doing this because the admin title can be used when you're exporting data. You can even inject custom form API properties into an element. This feature is a permission that you have to turn on what it opens up is you can customize and add custom properties to your form elements that then could do totally custom behaviors for your clients and your organizations in your organization now i'm going to hit save the element's been added to the bottom i'm going to show it to you go over to view and you can see the element deliberately, deliberately kind of made a mistake here it should be called your company should be required and moved up it gives me this opportunity to show you another feature to the module now you can do that here you can drag it up hit required, scroll down and hit save, but I want to show you how to edit the source behind a form. Sorry about that window. Here's the source code behind this entire form, and you have full control over that. I'm going to move the element up, and this is the form API serialized to YAML, and I can hit your com enter your company, and what's powerful about this is you can cut and paste. This is really for developers that understand Drupal's form API, which is what the web form module is completely extending here. And this is a very short form, but for very long forms, it's a very powerful feature because you can edit all the labels at once. You can copy multiple elements. You can copy from one form to another. You can see exactly what's going on. If you have complex conditional logic, you can just read the data and how it's structured. I'm going to scroll down, hit Save. Now another opportunity to show you the test tab, and this also populate your form with reasonable settings. You actually have control over what email addresses would be used in your examples. 
I'm going to go fill out the form and hit send. I do have the mail log module turned on, which gives us an on-screen version of the email that's being sent out and just shows you how it's being sent in the field. And there's my email address, which you can write down and contact me. I'm going to click back. So we've had the email sent out. Now I want to show you the results coming in. And here's an admin view for results. This is a very quick submission view, but there's a table view that shows you everything coming in. And I do want to emphasize you can filter. You can filter by the flagging, which is over here. You can flag and you can add notes to your submissions. And you can even customize this table. This is not views, this is a much lighter weight version of views where you can just drag and drop what columns you want displayed and how you want to sort in the max item per page. And there is a web form views module that you can install to build views from your web form submissions. But this is a very good way to look at it. And let's let's quickly jump to a, a submission, just look at it. Here's your data. You do have an opportunity to edit it here. There's a table view, and this is also very useful for very long forms. It gives you a side by side. You can scan it very quickly. It's a plain text view. If you're pushing your submission into an SMS or you're changing, you're sending plain text emails, this just gives you just plain text version of it. There's even the raw data, which is being displayed as YAML, so it just gives you an idea of how the data is structured, what the metadata is in the background. It's only available to admins. You can turn on that on and off. You can also resend any email or SMS message if you want. It just gives you a nice UI, and you can click through and even make minor adjustments to it. I'm going to jump back up to results. And the other part about this is you can download it. And what I want to show you is the download, and you have... You can download it as a text, to lim a text to limited file, CSV, or um, for HTML tables, very useful. If you check this off, what will happen is it'll trigger the download opening in Excel, and I want to show you the download just on a website. And basically, I'm generating a table. You have full control over what columns, options, whether it's the label or the key of each element. I just want to show you the table that's being generated. It's a very simple table. It looks very clean in Excel, and you have full control over this. And we just talked about downloading the data. And the next part that I brought up was distributing the data, which I want to jump back to the form. And I'm going to go over to the form again. I'm going to go over to handlers over here. And this is where the emails are being controlled for the form. I'm considering email as part of distributing it, and they're distributed using a handler. I'll quickly show you the email. It's very simple to from. You can do CC and BCC out of the box. Customize the subject, you can customize the body, you can say what values are included, you can even turn on every handler has a debugger. Um, it ships with HTML emails on by default because it's very standard now. Now the other type of handler that I want to show you is a remote post. And what this does is allows you to take the data as it's coming in and push it to another server. And you can enter I use CRMs as a great example where you could post this to a Salesforce endpoint. And you can do it on insert, update, or delete. Depends on if you're saving data to Drupal or not. You can say whether it's form your own code or just own. You can control what data. By default, it only sends the elements that you've selected and none of the metadata. And you just check it off if you need it. You can even add custom data that's being sent out. So as the data is going out, you can add an API key. And once again, you can enable debugging. Now, handlers are plugins. Very easy to implement. You can also extend this remote post handler to create your own organization's custom remote post handler. You can also just use the code as a starting point to do custom integrations with third-party systems. And I also expect people are starting to build modules that integrate with other systems like Google Sheets or Slack. You can have forms post to Slack. It's a very powerful feature. So we've walked through the whole workflow of building a form collecting submissions, and downloading it. Now what I'd like to walk you through quickly is just the settings that are available. And once again, I want to emphasize it ships with reasonable default, so you don't have, have ever have to touch this. But I'm going to just walk, scan through it. You can control the URL, how it's set up. You can open and close. You can schedule when a form is open and close. You can control the message. You can control the exception message if there's any issue with the form. It's you control the form buttons, the submit button, and you can inject CSS and styles into that submit button. And then you get into, this is a whole series of nuances to a form and how it's handled. So you can prevent people from clicking twice on the submit button. You can disable the back button so they don't lose their data. You can warn them if they're going to lose their data. You can disable auto completion. If you have a secure form, you might want to do that. You can disable client-side validation. 
You can auto-focus the first element. It's a stupid feature, but very useful for forms that people are repeatedly filling out, where once they get to the page, it jumps to it. Um, you can, once again, all the attributes of the form you can control. And then you get into wizards. I'm going to start collapsing. You can do previews. You can set up drafts. You can set up submission settings and require people to be logged in to submit. And you can set up submission limits per user, per entity, per form. You can set up automatic purging of drafts that have been saved. You can set up confirmations. You can do it as a page, an inline message. You can do it as message, a URL. This is one's going to the front page. You control the message using an HTML editor. You set who owns the form. And this, once again, shows you the custom settings. So you can inject custom properties into your form. And this is a very powerful feature where you can actually have the form post to a completely different server if you never want Drupal to hit the data. So you're using Drupal to build forms that post for a high performance situation to a Node.js, MongoDB backend. You can do that easily. Moving ahead in that same stuff I'm discuss discussing is you can inject custom CSS and JavaScript into your forms. And you can do this globally too. This allows you to control all the nuances of the layout of your page and the behavior of your widgets. It's a very powerful feature. It opens up a lot of possibilities for you adjusting a form. And that is also set by a permission, so you can turn that off for certain users. You can disable the feature completely. And I've jumped to access controls, and you have full control over who can access this form submissions and who can update and delete them. And I've walked you through most of the features of the module, so I'm going to jump back to the presentation. And it brings up the question, what can you do with a web form? And the answer is, you know, the web form module allows you to quickly build forms that are flexible and completely yours. My way of putting it, you can build anything. And you can do anything. It's Drupal. You have full control over this. You can alter anything you want. You can adjust it. And the, the, there's a way to demo this because the module ships with some sub-modules. And the first one I'm going to show you is examples. And it ships with examples. I'm going to show you an example of every element. And if you turn on this module, you get this form. It shows you all the behaviors. And yes, you can add custom look and feels to your checkboxes. You can do multiple elements. As I scroll, it gets more interesting. You get email confirmation, you get passwords, you get rating elements. These are JavaScript widgets that you have full control over. There's a signature element. You get internationalized phone inputs if you need to. It really helps with if you have an international audience. This makes it very clear that you understand them, that they're not Americans all the time. And you can even say, don't show American numbers. Um, moving ahead, there's file uploads that are broken down into different file types because on mobile devices, the audio file will open up a recorder, the video file will open up a, the video recorder, the image file will open up the camera. It's a very useful feature. It's media types. Then you get into some option elements and you can do other, and you have full control over the other as well. I can show that to you with the checkboxes. I'm going to keep going. Get table selections, sorting, toggles. Date elements, full control over your date elements, a bunch of varieties. And these all ship with Gore. And then a very important feature is entity references. So you can set up entity reference using autocomplete, checkboxes, radios, and select. And this quickly just shows you that there's support for the select two element. There's a custom term selection element that shows you the full term hierarchy. It makes it available to you. And the machine element's also supported. Moving it back. There's support for composite elements, which is a group of elements working together. Best example is to create an address field so you can have someone add multiple addresses. If you're a developer, you can build your own composites for your organization. There's also Likert support, so you can set up Likert elements. There's a link element. There's an address element that uses Google API to autofill. And there's a mapping element, which I'm actually using to start working on things like mapping web form submissions to field API. That's kind of the long-term concept name element. There's the international phone number again, but this is a rich telephone widget and now stores the type and extension. And you have control over this, and there's also support for text formats. Jumping back to the demo, not going to go too much further into these examples, but I'll just show you there's conditional logic support. Conditional logic means I check off this box and this element hides and shows and is required or not required. Not going to show you input mass. There's very there's basic layout support. Um, I like showing this because there are these dismissible messages that you can insert inline into your forms, and you get little nuanced layouts and multi-column checkboxes. The big one to show you with layout is there's support for multiple columns. So you get a multi-column layout using Flexbox. This resizes on mobile to a nice one-column layout. 
You have full control over this too. And finally, there is a wizard. I'm not gonna click through, people are familiar with a wizard, but you can break up your form into multiple steps. I've walked you through all the examples here. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you, it's, so now you can get a sense of all the features available. Now these are templates that are working forms that show you all the possibilities for a form. I like giving you a preview of a donation template. This is stuff you'd have to wire yourself, but it gives you an idea of how you might lay out a donation template. And you have full control over these, so you could copy these templates, you can edit these templates, you could delete this template if you are never gonna have a donation form and you're only gonna do job applications. Well, here's a job application template and you have full control over these. You can manipulate them for your own organization or you can turn off the module. And another thing to take this further, these are examples of single forms. And another concept that I just started working on with the web form module is, is demos. And I'm gonna show you one of the demos and it's the only one available. I'm calling it an application evaluation system. Let me close that. So as I walk through, you'll start to understand what I mean. It's a module that ships with two forms. This is an application, it's a very simple application where someone's just filling in contact. I'm gonna hit test. Someone's filled out this form. It's an application, let's say it's for a job. We'll go back to the form, and now we're gonna look at the results. I have some dummy data here already, but you can see 101 is the one we just submitted. I'm gonna click through. Here's the data. Now what gets interesting is I've attached another form using the block to the bottom of this submission, and now this is an evaluation of the application. So you can check off and review this person. I like this person. And then you could hit, you could even save it or submit. And then at the top, you're gonna to get this notice. I'm logged in as an admin, so I can edit this still. But no more submissions are permitted because I've limited evaluations to one per user. And now you can see you have a record of it. And if you navigate it to another one, you can do another evaluation. And what the demo, this demo module, all it does is it has the two forms, the application evaluation, and then the block that is gluing the two forms together to create this system. And just gives you an example, there's no custom glue code or anything more complex than configuration. Opens up a lot of possibilities. Another possibility with the Webform module is an event registration system where you create events throughout your site and then you attach registration form to all those events and it will track which events people are registering for. Going back to my presentation. So I think I've shown you everything I can about the Webform module for now to get you started, but I'd like to say, how can I help you with Webforms in Drupal 8? Um, I think it's important. There's a lot of documentation out there. I'm active in the issue queue. There's these training videos. If you go to drupal.org, there's documentation pages walking through features. People are building a cookbook of code snippets to work from. You can also contribute to the module by building a feature or requesting a feature. Um, and hopefully someone might need the same feature and help build it out. And you can also contact me if you need help building a feature and want to pay for a feature to be added to the web form module, I'm available. Or if you need help with training or planning or architecting or anything. And you can catch me on my website, uh, jrockowitz.com. I'm known on drupal.org as jrockowitz. You can fill out that form there too. And you can get a lot more information from my website. And I really just want to say thanks for your time. I hope you enjoy using the web form module. I hope you get the most out of it. And yeah, feel free to contact me if you need some help.